Today we delve into the topic of identity and I'm sitting with my two colleagues to chat about this important aspect of our lives. Ladies, I find identity so personal and I'd love to know what does it bring up for you when we talk about identity, Pali? Multi-dimensional, yeah. um, definitely. And there's that famous movie and the quote goes, we're like an onion. Mm. You've got so many layers to it. And I think for myself, identity has been something I struggled with. Um, just as I grew with each stage of life, it evolved, yes. it looked different, it felt very different. But I would like to say just as a whole, identity is who you are, the label you place on yourself, yes. not what society tells you, not what your uh, culture or customs tell you who you are, but who you tell yourself. Who, yes. who is Balisa? And, and I guess what you connect with at a different stage in your life, because I'm sure you'll agree that at different various stages in your life, you felt different about your identity yeah. because you're ever evolving. W what is it like for you, Tumi? That was actually going to be my answer as well, exactly what you guys ah, have said. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that identity is an ever-changing thing yeah. because we grow. I mean, the person that I was 15 years ago is a completely different different person to who I am now and how I imagined myself to be. So yep. identity for the longest time for me was how people viewed me because mm. you are, you come from this community, this is how people assume your life will be. I had to figure that out for myself, yes. which is something like we, I think we all concur on. It's about an internal, you know, going deep within yourself and actually figuring out who is Dumi and what yes. makes Dumi, you know, pop. What is it about Dumi? Yes. And that what it was 10 years ago is not what it is now. Right, yes, it so. ever changes. Right, yes, so. Yeah. so I'd love to ask you, you know, um, often our identity is so entrenched and linked to our culture mm. and where we come from. And I know that you two are very steeped in your culture. Have you found that things have changed from your upbringing and your parents to who you are today and how probably maybe different you would parent your kids? Definitely. Oh, girl. <laughs> <laughs> how much time do we have? Are we sure we only have an hour? on the show because I can go in on yeah. this topic. Please do. This is something I've struggled with okay. from literally day one and for a very long time and I can identify with what Dumi is saying. Huh? I can identify <laughs> to what Dumi is saying in the sense that for a very long time you placed it on what other people viewed you as. For myself, I'm just going to start with language. Mm. Yes. My parents yes. decided to teach us as their children English as our mother tongue, as our first language and only decided to incorporate Zulu and Kosa much later, um, their reasoning is that they didn't want us to struggle at school. They wanted us to be flying fishes and, you know, getting mm -hmm. AAAs. Um, but that took a lot away from us when now it's time to go back to the rurals and identify and then connect with our yes. cousins because we didn't speak the same language as them. You know, we spoke broken English and for a long time we were then labelled the coconuts. Mm, okay. We were, we were almost too white to be close to our cousins and mm -hmm. our family, but then you're also definitely a black South African when you're at school. So yeah. that's something that I struggled with for a very long time. Adding another layer, Christianity versus tradition you know there has been that debate and this is a, a topic for another show yes but there's another kind of conflict there where if you do come from a traditional family that slaughter and they do all of those yes. things uh, but you decide to take the Christian route sometimes there is a little bit of a back and forth who are you what do you stand for mm. so that's been a conversation that's been ongoing throughout my life and it's gotten to a stage now that I've decided to empower myself and yeah. learn Zulu the right way and and that. and be able to connect with with my people in Ngesi Zulu. Yes, I love that. And you're doing that now because you choose to do choose that and to. you want to do that at this stage of your life. Mm. For you, Tumi? No, I agree with every single thing you're saying, Palisa, especially because not only just as a black female, as a female, mm. there's so much of our yeah. identity that is linked to being a female. That's why for me, it's not even a one show conversation. It's a whole life conversation because yes. our identity consistently changes, not only from your culture where you, you, you've grown up. I live in Cape Town now. My son and I barely speak Susutu, but I try and incorporate that into our conversations every now and then. But I do know that the life that we're living right now is so different where con communicating in our mother tongue is not as possible as it used to be before because of the surroundings and the environment that mm. we're in. And I actually want to ask you, Z, turning the question on yes. to you, when you think of the concept of not only identity as a whole, but how it relates to you, you yeah. as a mother, mm. you as a wife, you as a colleague, where do you stand? 
So it's so interesting, you know, if you speak to most, obviously I'm making a generalised statement here, but I would think that if you speak to most coloured people, we kind of do struggle with identity because mm. it's like, where do you come from? I remember growing up, I was often trying to look for the white in my family. Like, where does the white come from? Today, you know, I identify as being a coloured woman. However, I have these mixed race children yeah. who are going through a, a, a huge role confusion versus identity in their own little lives at the moment. There's a wonderful um, theorist called Erickson and he speaks about something called identity versus role confusion, which we actually all go through as human beings from the age of 12 years old to about 18 years old, where we start pushing boundaries. Yeah. That's why they think teenagers are nightmares, right? Because we, we're trying to find out who we are. So my kids are navigating that right now as teenagers, mm -hmm. but they're also navigating that further as mixed race children. Yeah. So I identify so much with that. However, where I am today, I kind of love who I am, but most importantly, I identify as being human. Yes. For me, it's what connects me to you yeah. from a human level as opposed to, Language. you know, a race yeah. level or a culture level. I want to connect in terms of humanness. So that's what's important to me mm. today. I love that. And I resonate with that also so uh, well, because I find it so interesting and bizarre that when people say, who are you, Balisa? Mm. I say, well, I'm a daughter. <laughs> I am a fiance, I'm a wife to be, I am a stepmom, I'm that, but that's my role. role yes. That's not who I am. Yes. So this conversation truly can lead us in so many different paths and all are very much worth exploring. Yes. I have to tell you, one of our guests earlier on asked me, what is my role in the show today? Yeah. And I, I said to me, he said, are you the link? And, you know, <laughs> as in the host. And I was like, yes, I'm the link. I'm the connector. I'm going to connect you to someone else. And mm, that's how I think yeah. we should all see ourselves as links and yeah. connectors to one another. Absolutely. So we hope that this conversation inspired you to go on a journey of self-discovery and to embrace the richness of your own identity. On social media, we would like to know from you which three words would you use to describe yourself and your identity? Remember to use the hashtag Afternoon Express in all your comments and we'll see you after the break.